Hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning on how to crop images. So a lot of you might be saying well didn't we learn how to do that uh, using the, sp uh, the spread animation tutorials. Well we learned a method on how to actually scale down um, the image or to actually kind of crop out an image using the the source rect right so we can use a source rectangle to actually crop out an image with another image upon a drawing but sometimes you want to actually crop out an image before drawing or maybe you want to crop it out for a different reason maybe you don't want to uh, to draw the cropped out image but you need the cropped out image for whatever reason so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to indeed uh, crop out an image and uh, yeah, so uh, this is going to be kind of based on what we learned from the the pixel perfect collision. So some of this should be familiar to you. So what we want to do is that in our player class, we want to create. Uh, you can create this in the player, the animation class, up to you. But I created this in the player class, and we want to make a private method and of texture two D type, and we're going to call it crop. And we're going to take two parameters. We're going to get the the image that we want to crop from and the area that we want to crop. So like the source rectangle. So first of all, what we need to do is that we need to create a, a new image that we're, we're going to uh, set our cropped image to. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a new image called Texture2D and we're going to name it Cropped Image. That's equal to new texture 2D, but we never cropped an image yet. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to set the graphics device equal to our images graphics design device, and we're going to set uh, the width and height of our new texture equal to the width of the source rectangle and the height of the source rectangle. So that is how uh, wide the dimensions of our new texture 2D. Okay, so just like in our pixel collision, we're going to have two different colors. I'm going to store them in an array. First is our image data. Uh, that's going to take the pixels or the colors from this texture. And the crop data, which is what we're going to do to write. We're going to write the new, uh, the cropped on image to this data and then add it to this cropped image. So what we need to do is that we need to set the new color equal to the image's width times the image's height. And uh, for the crop data, we're going to set this to the source's width times the source's height. Okay. Now, what we need to do is that we actually need to get the data of our image and store it into our image data array. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do image.getData. Our data that we're storing in there is a color and we're storing it in the in the variable image data. So, all the pixels are stored within the uh, within the image data. Now we want to create a variable called index, and this index is going to actually cycle through all um uh, through our crop data array to put in the pixels accordingly. So what we want to do is that we want to do a for loop like this. Now notice you have to do it with the y first, like calculating the source y, uh, the height, etc., and then the x uh, second. The reason being is that it's the way the uh the, the is is allocated within our array. So if we look at if we get our picture, what it does is that it, it gets our picture and then it starts uh, calculating the pixels horizontally. So it gets a pixel uh, right here, then it will scan all the pixels here and then store it in, and then scan all the pixels within the next uh, line, etc., etc. So if you think of it in a two-dimensional array sense, it will get all the pixels on the first line, get all the pixels on the second line, third line, etc., etc. Okay. So in order to actually align them correctly and uh, instead of inverting them or making them opposite or, or make it a flipped image, what we need to do is that we need to set the for loop into, uh, we make an integer and we can name it whatever we want. I name it Y uh, and Y is going to be equal to source Y and we do Y is less than source Y plus source height and then we increment it by one each loop. And what for a nested for loop, we, we make a variable called x is equal to our sources x, and we loop to the source x plus the source width, and we increment it by uh, one each time. Okay, so then we use crop data and we do our index or index variable. It's going to be equal to image data y times image width plus x. So now you're saying, okay, what is going on here? 
Okay, well notice that our color is a single is a single array. Okay, it's not a multi-dimensional array. It's not a double array. Not a uh, whatever. It is just a a one D array. Okay, so what we need to do is that we kind of need to uh we need to focus on which sprites that we actually need to get. So what this is representing is that we're doing the we're getting the column number times uh the width of the column or how long each um each row is within the column plus the row number okay so if we think of it in a 2d uh dimensional sense th then look at it this way okay so say uh we uh we need to get the pixel the, the pixel in the uh the second row Okay, so say say yeah, we need to get a pixel in the second column, uh, and the the third item. Okay, so what we would want to do if we want to get in the second row, then y would be equal to one. So one times image width. So say the image uh is ten pixels. So y times ten. I mean one one times ten is equal to ten. So then our pixel is gonna be at ten, and then uh, so we know that uh the second column starts at the index number ten. And then whatever our row number is, then we increment it by that row number value, and then we'll get the correct pixel, and we'll store it in there. Now, I know this might kind of seem confusing, but once you keep on looking over the code, and if you think of it in a two-dimensional array sense, uh, then it will kind of make more sense to you. But if you ever have any problems or having difficulty understanding it, then you can always post a question on codingmadeeasy.ca slash forum, and uh, you post on there, and I'll, I'll help you out with, it, with your problem. So after this, what we want to do is that we can't forget to increment the index by one, or therefore we'll just re re be replacing the value. So we increment index by one each time. Okay. So after our our two for loops, what we want to do is that we actually have to uh, create our new image. So we set data for our new image, but we never put anything within our new image. So what we need to do is we do cropped image dot set data the data we're putting in this color and we put in our crop data so that's gonna fill in the uh, our t our new texture two D with the cropped pixels and therefore we'll get our cropped image and what we do is that we return our cropped image so we we get the cropped image that we just created okay so uh just to test this out what we did what I did is that I put after the player animation update, because the player the animation update uh, after we update the loop, it gives us our source rect. Now I know I changed a lot of things with the source rect for a reason. Uh, the reason being is that after this, I changed the animation image, right? So the image is going to be our new cropped image. So once we do things like uh, like if current frame is greater current frame times the frame width is greater than or equal to the image width, then whatever, whatever. Uh, I noticed that our, our our new the image that our animation image is set to is set to the cropped image, not the whole image that we're cropping from. Uh, so I never handled this good. It's up to you to manage it to see how you want to handle it better. But what I did is that I just said that if current frame is greater than or equal to four, since we know that our image is four frames uh, horizontally, then we just reset to zero. And then for the source rec, I just said the current frame times 32, since we know our image is uh, 32 pixels uh, wide uh, for each image. And I did current frame wide times 48, since uh, each frame is 48 pixels long. So I just did that, and the width is 32 and 48. Uh, so I just put uh, to, uh, uh, a comment here saying that it's new, just so you guys understand. But you guys, it's up to you guys to make this code better, more efficient. Uh, so it calculates the actual frame width and frame height of the actual image, etc., etc. It's up to you guys to fix that. I know how to do it, but I decided to guys give you guys like a challenge on how to actually handle it. Uh, so yeah. So w once we do that, we get our source rect. And once we get our source rec, what we want to do is go back to our player class. And we do we after our update, because after our update, that's when we get our source rectangle. We do player animation not animation image. So we want to change the image and we make the image equal to our, our our method. And the method takes two parameters. So the player image that we're putting in there and the uh source, the source rectangle. And in the animation class, I just made a, a property called source right that returns the source rectangle 
As for the draw method in the animation class, we take away our source rectangle because we've already cropped the image. Uh, this is the cropped image right here. So we just have only the position and the color. So once we run this uh, program, we're going to get, we should essentially get the same animation. So our player moves accordingly, correctly. So we have our cropped image. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye.